So for the past year, like most students, I've had to go to school and study online. And as a result, I've spent countless hours on my desk in my room, which was something that I barely even touched before COVID as I always opted to study on campus or at the libraries. Hey guys, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Aaron and I recently finished my senior year at the University of Toronto but I also make videos on the side. Today I'm gonna to be showing you my student desk setup that I've worked with for the past year of online school. And although I recently moved into a new apartment so my room's a lot bigger, I haven't had the chance to update my desk setup yet. So it's basically what I've worked with over the past year and what's worked well for me. All right, so jumping right into it, the centerpiece of my desk setup is obviously the desk itself. And I actually have two different desks here arranged in sort of an L-shaped layout. The main desk is what I have my two monitors attached to and it's actually a standing desk that the kind people at FlexiSpot sent over to me. So this is their EC1 standing desk frame attached with a 48 by 24 inch mahogany desktop. So basically the same size as the standard IKEA desks. They sent this desk over to me but haven't paid me to say anything, so everything you're hearing is my own opinion, but I really have enjoyed this desk so far. I really like the build quality of the desk, it feels super solid. Even at its high setting with two monitor arms attached to it, it doesn't wobble much, so it definitely feels really sturdy for day-to-day -day use. The range of this desk is also great, it goes from 28 inches to 48 inches, so I'm 6'1", and even when I'm standing up to use the desk, there's a lot of room for it to go even higher. So like most of us, if you are spending a lot of time indoors these days, at your desk either for school or work and are looking to upgrade your desk setup, I would definitely recommend looking into getting a standing desk. I naturally move and fidget a lot, so being able to switch from sitting all day to standing whenever you want has definitely helped me stay focused and productive after working for a lot of hours at once. This standing desk from FlexiSpot retails for 350 US dollars or 430 Canadian dollars and is a really nice entry level standing desk. So if you are looking for a standing desk and want to check out FlexiSpot, I'll leave a link in the description as well as a promo code you can use to save an additional $15. So the second desk I have connected to this side is just my old desk and it's just a standard 48 inch by 24 inch IKEA tabletop with an Alex drawer on the left side and the regular IKEA table legs on the right side. I don't really have a purpose for this desk right now, but it's nice to have more desk space to work with all the time and I also like to eat on my desk sometimes, so having a separate area away from my computer and other work stuff to put my food is good. I am thinking of adding some new lights and rearranging the space into something that I can use to film YouTube product videos, but right now it's just sitting around as a spare desk on the side. So the next major part of my desk setup are these two monitors I have attached to a monitor arm clamped onto my desk. Both of my monitors are 24 inches and only 1080p in resolution, so neither of them are the greatest displays, but both of them were pretty cheap. I got them for around 250 Canadian dollars each, and I'm probably gonna upgrade them sometime soon. So my first monitor on the left is the Dell P2419 USB-C monitor, and I got this last summer before my internship uh, when I didn't have a PC yet, so I liked how you could connect it via USB-C to a laptop. The monitor itself was good enough for school and my internship, so any productivity tasks, but it has a standard 60 hertz refresh rate, so not great for gaming, and the color accuracy isn't super amazing either, so probably not for professional photo or video editing. And on the right side, I have my second monitor, the ASUS VG248, which I got last winter and mainly used for gaming. This is a budget gaming monitor, but it has a 165Hz refresh rate and decent color accuracy after you do some tweaking. So it's worked out for me pretty well. This monitor is also brighter than my Dell display, so if you are gaming in brighter conditions, it works pretty well. The one downside about this monitor is that it has pretty bad viewing angles. So if you aren't sitting directly in front of the monitor, you get some washed out images and weird colors. In terms of monitors, I think a full HD or 1080p resolution is good enough for a 24 inch monitor, but anything larger than that, like a 27 or 30 plus inch monitor, you might notice a bit of the pixelation. So look into maybe a high resolution if you can. And lastly, the monitor arm holding up both of these displays is one that I picked up from Amazon for less than a hundred bucks from this company called Huano. This monitor arm has been essential to me since it lets me hold up both of my displays side by side when I'm doing any sort of schoolwork or other productivity tasks. They also help elevate the monitor so they're closer to eye level and gives you more desk space to work with. The arm also helps me move one display into the center for when I'm gaming or editing videos since I like to sit a little bit closer to my screen. I think if you have more than one display or just a larger monitor and a smaller desk, definitely consider getting monitor arms as it frees up a lot of desk real estate and also lets you configure your monitors in any sort of way. Having dual monitors in general though definitely isn't necessary, especially if you're just a student. 
It's definitely more useful if you're doing actual work with different applications. So if you are working an internship or a full-time job, maybe consider having those two monitors since it is nice to have two full-size windows open at once. All right, moving on to the keyboard and the mouse. I've actually gotten a lot of questions about both of them before, but neither of them are mine. I actually got both of these from my cousin who's a lot more into keyboards and mice than I am and just had these lying around. So the keyboard I use is the Ducky One. It's a TKL sized keyboard with Cherry MX Brown switches and custom blue and pink keycaps. It's not a super special keyboard or anything, but I like how the switches feel for typing. The Cherry MX Brown switches are really tactile and have a small bump feeling in them, so you don't accidentally press keys down as easily, and it also helps me type a little bit faster. And the mouse I use is the G-Wolves Hattie wired mouse. It's a gaming mouse by design, so the honeycomb pattern on the top might look a little bit strange to you. But after getting used to how light it is at only 65 grams, it's really hard for me to switch back to a heavier mouse. The size of the mouse is also a little bit larger than most light gaming mice, so it doesn't feel as tiring to use for long periods of time if you have larger hands. Alright, lastly we're going to move into some other miscellaneous items that I have lying around my desk that's part of my desk setup. The most obvious thing here is my desk pad, which is just a classic oversized mouse pad that I picked up from a brand called Aki on Amazon for pretty cheap. It's worked well for me since I like to move my mouse around a lot when I'm using my computer and this gives me a lot more space to do that than a regular mouse pad. I also don't use my iPad with a case, so having that soft surface to use my iPad on when I'm using it at the desk is also pretty helpful. I also don't have speakers for my setup yet, but I use headphones whenever I edit and game. So I have these Sony XM3s which are super amazing and comfortable. The only thing I don't like about this headset is the built-in microphone. So instead I have this gaming microphone attachment, so I just use my headphones as wired for now until I'm getting an external mic, but it's worked pretty well. In the corner of my desk I also have my Amazon Echo Dot that I've owned for a couple of years now, but I only mainly use that to check the weather and also as a secondary alarm clock. And lastly, beside that, I have a wireless charging stand that I picked up from Amazon again from a company called Nanami. It works exactly as you'd expect with fast charging and it was also pretty cheap, so it's just a good place to put my iPhone on when I'm doing work at my desk. But that's it for my current student desk setup video. It's by no means complete and there are a lot of changes and things I wanna to add to in this setup. So maybe I can do an updated desk and room tour once I get around to doing all of that. I hope you guys still enjoyed the video though and maybe found some inspiration for your own desk setups at home. Dropping a like is super helpful and be sure to subscribe with bell notifications if you don't want to miss out on more student and tech related content coming soon. But until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.